hello guys welcome back to my channel today i'll be showing you how to do composite in blender but the way i'm going to do this composite is not like i'm going to render then go to the composite not what i will always do is to render all my files into a folder let me show you so i name them then i render everything into a folder with a exr multi-layer passes so this is footage so let me just show you the pacman this are the exr multi-layer passes so with this you will be able to composite very very much accurate okay so let's go back to compositing so and let's get started so go to the compositing now we should not have to turn on the use node to be able to use this the first thing i want to do is to just to check this and reduce every render to medium the media so everything can be a little bit faster because you know that blender compositing it's quite slow so I don't need this and uh, let me just get rid of everything so now I get started and importing my files so the first one I'm going to import is the footage itself so I will press shift A go to input then image sequence so then I will select my image which is the this right so this is the image sequence when i just press ctrl then shift then click when you turn on the node regular add-on inside blender pressure you can able to do this and you can work more efficient with this okay so now this is the footage when i scrub through you can see how the footage looks you can see all right so that is this so the next thing we need to import is our files our renders okay now let me just press shift a again go to image next i will go to image sequence again because this has been rendered as image sequence so I'm going to choose this pac first drag it inside, just press A to select all and press import image sequence ok now, after you do this this way, you will start seeing something different now you see the passes are enabled when rendering this so when you go here, I already made a video on that so you need to stop the same and check that out so you can see the render passes, render layers here so the passage you enable is what we get in your final here so that is that so when you just check if it is the ambient occlusion this is the ambient occlusion you can see now we have the emission which show the eyes then we have the RGB which is the Pac-Man itself then we have the vector okay now this is the way I used to do my own comp you can see that this vector is what drives the motion and what I use this vector to do is for the motion blur because I don't normally use our default motion blur here yeah because I'm doing the cup myself so I will have to do everything to make sure I have better results okay so what I will do is to come this together you can see so for some reason I don't, I don't normally render in full HD what I do is render to in HD which is L20 then I will upscale it to the final so what I'm going to do now is to match this together first shift A go to input color then alpha over okay this image should be at the top then render it should be at the bottom i don't know where it's like this but this is how blender does its things okay so now we have the render you can see that it's off somehow this is not looking right so what we have to do now is to scale this up because like i said i render this in a 720p image so for this i need to upscale it so what i have to do is press shift a go to scale distort then i'm going to choose a scale node so i'll put the scale node here then change it to render size you can see that suddenly it fits the screen okay so now you can see that now this is fitting the screen which is our first vfs render here okay you can see that the background is a little bit brighter so what we need to do is to drop that down a bit shift a now and just go to color then select a gamma node drop it here so in other software let me just say like milk if you want to drop gamma you decrease the resolution but for some reason blender do it opposite so you have to increase it to drop the gamma i don't know why everything like this but that's how blender does the thing so you have to follow it so now it's matching pretty nice so for this now I still have something to come in so we have i we have but next thing i have to come is the ambient occlusion 
So the ambient occlusion will give it more depth into the scene. So fresh, what I have to do is to duplicate this, shift D, then duplicate that, then drop this here. Also fix the ambient occlusion because if you don't do it, you won't have a correct ambient occlusion. So press shift A, go to color, then select a mix node. Drop that to the first here. Now connect this output of this ambient occlusion to the input of this mix. Now when you press Ctrl Shift and click, you can view this. So viewing this, you are seeing that we don't have a proper output. So to have a proper output, just click on this mix, then change it to multiply. Now we are having a proper output. So now when you just mix everything together and connect, you can see what you are getting. But if you look at it, you can see that this is a little bit darker, so we can bright that up, you know. Press Shift go to the color, then we can get a gamma. Like I said, if you want to bright this up, we have to decrease the gamma. So decreasing the gamma will bright it up. That's how Blender does it since. So you can see that everything brights up a little bit. And when you mute this with M, you can see the difference. This is before and this is after. All right. So when you look at this, we are getting some yes. You can tell that this is going fine. So pack this here, then I will just drag it back a bit. If you look at this, we are know you know that we are missing something very important right now, which is the shadow. If you have something like this in the scene, we will have a shadow in place. So when you just go back to our render where in my files, you can see that I have the shadow pass, a self-separate pass. So what I do here is to press shift again, go to input, select image sequence. Now I have to drag this shadow into the space like this just press a to select everything then import image sequence now this is the shadow so for this i already have a shadow and also the ambient occlusion of the shadow so this is the ambient occlusion this is the alpha which is the plain color and this is the shadow okay so let's just come the shadow press shift a go to the color then alpha over node put that here then drop this down then if you view this, you have something like this. And if you view everything together, see that the shadow is not correct. Because we also have to scale this up because, like I said, I rendered everything in HD, not full HD. So I duplicate this, then drop it here. You can see now the shadow correct. So when I mute this on and off, you can toggle this on and off. You can see that the shadow is now correct, which is good. So you can just drop a gamma also to fix this shadow a bit. Color, gamma. So this is really why you want to do this this way because you want to have much more flexibility in your shot, okay? Because now I can tweak this, do some color to it. I can add some color to background, separate it, the back mask separately, and this is really, really cool. So now what I can do is to comp this eyes so to do this, I'll just check this eyes, but you can see it. So what I'm going to do is to press Shift A, go to Alpha over this time, bring the eyes, which is the emission, put it down. Now you should drag this up. So when you view this, this is what you get. So if you want to come anything like light, you don't use Alpha over, but if you promote it, it doesn't work. So you don't use Alpha over unless you want to do something like alphas so this because this doesn't have an alpha channel so we don't use alpha so instead of that we use a mix node so appreciate go to mix so we reconnect this back the way it should be so now you should know where you should use alpha because this doesn't have an alpha so we should have alpha you can see the way it looks so when you change this to add you get it perfectly but you can see the location is different because the scale is different so we have to also add this scale to it to fit it sorry i'm putting it somewhere else so the emission all right this is the emission so now you can see everything is right so to add this we can add glow to this which is glare shift a go to filter then add a glare node to this if you put that here you see that we're having some glow, nice glow going on in this. So we can increase the mix value a bit. But the way I like to do it is to use like a four glow, then 
decrease the size, decrease the stress load, like one stress load. So if it glows a little bit, like M, you can say no glow, then add glow. Okay, so that's that. So when you view everything together, you just to bring this into the down socket like so. Then plug everything together. Now you have a perfect comp of your Pac-Man and Shadow. So for now, this is cool. And if you look, if you sculpt through this timeline to see this, you see that we are getting some dark something here. So it's because this is the shadow of the of the pole. So we still need to import our pole. And you know, the, if you want to import the pole, we have to import it forward because we are already doing the comp. So the pole should be at the front. So what we are going to do is to import the pole. Like I said, I have tutorial on this already. So you can check that out how to use render passes. So we know you understand everything about render passes and how to use them. So now let's press shift A, go to the input also. Now select image here in the sequence. Then let's find our pole. So drag this in the same. Press A, select everything, then import. Now this is our sequence. We have the ambient occlusion for the pole. You can see. Then we have the image itself, then the vector. So I will still show you how to compose this vector, but let's do everything first because the vector take a lot of space, a lot of memory, so it will take a long to cache. So I don't want to shred that now. So I want to do everything before I do the vector, but I will show you now. Okay, now to come this press shift A, like the rest. Now let's use alpha over for this because this is an alpha, because you see the RGB is an alpha. So this over to this, so let's copy the scale node from here because we need to scale it up, like I said before. So when you just match everything together like so, you have something like this. All right, you can see the way this looks. But if you look at this pool, for some reason, it doesn't look right. It doesn't look perfect yet because it lacks a lot of things. Okay, now let's do the compact comp. So, if you look at this, we have the ambient occlusion. We need to composite the ambient occlusion because the ambient occlusion will give more depth and more shade, which is the proper shade for the pole. Now it will look very, very real. So, press Shift A, go to color, then select a mix, put it here. So, for this, take this up, then take this ambient occlusion to the bottom. Now we need to copy the scale node. For this ambient occlusion also then view it so when you view this as always this doesn't look right so until you change it to multiply because anything that is ambient which is black and white you use multiply to compete that's it so this is how it looks you can see that it's changed a lot so let me just put this here then view everything together so you can see that it feels more in place than before let me just hide this mute this you can see before then after you can see it looks like it belongs here so like always you can always tweak the color if it's too dark like shift a then go to the gamma drop that here so when you decrease the gamma you have more light so you can see it brighten everything up a bit and it looks like it belongs there so it looks perfect before then after Alright, so that is done. So the next thing to do now, let's talk about the vector because there's no way this thing Pac-Man will eat this in the full force, and this Pac-Man is not static, so it's on a motion. There will always be a motion blur, and I'm not using motion blur default. We have in Blender, but I'm using my own motion blur passes, which is the vector pass. Let me show you here. I already made to do on this, like I said. We have the vector pass if you go to the cycles this is EV, so it doesn't matter we are doing compositing only so it doesn't matter so we have the vector pass okay so now you see the vector okay let's come this okay so press shift a let's first of all let's add a scale so scale this up like the rest okay now when you press Shift A, go to search, let's search for vector. Now we have something to vector curve vector blur. Just choose the vector blur. Okay, now select this vector, then put it in the speed 
value here because the vector will calculate the speed. So when you look the vector here, this define the color, the UV channel of the speed. So that's how the vector works. So drop the image to the image. That's how you do it. Then if you view everything together, you should have a perfect motion blur for your sign. Let's wait for it. Like I said, it's six it's from this time. So you can see that this looks motion like it's on the motion. So if you view everything together with the comp, like so. taking a bit to render like I said now you can see that we have an emotion but if you look at this Pac-Man we still don't have motion on this Pac-Man so we have to do the same because if you look at it we also have a vector pass for this okay so let's do the same thing we did with here let's do it here also before I do let me just drag this and put it forward a bit okay so what I'm doing right now is not complex like the high end complex comp because this is somehow easy Comp and you have to understand these things. This multiply, however, all the things you have to understand it and the vector things. Okay, now let's press duplicate this with Shift D because you have to scale this up. So then A Shift A, then type vector, vector blur, then drop this vector to the speed because the vector will always be for the speed. It's calculate the speed then the image you have our image after you do your comp you have our image for this put this here so you add everything to this down socket and you should have a perfect so when you view everything together like so you have a perfect comp let's go for it all right now you can see we have motion in the pacman and also the break of the pole and this is how to do the comp so this is very very simple to make you can see it's not like it's very very difficult not all composites are very very difficult you just have to make sure you have a perfect colors you do a perfect shading a perfect lighting in 3d so you don't you won't have a lot of stress in doing the comp